Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is probably the silliest blaster in my whole collection and it took me forever to get one of these because they are so hard to find for some reason. But I managed to get one so now I'm gonna review it. Let's just get into it. <laughs> Zombie Strike Dreadful, a blaster that came out I believe in 2018, and people really didn't like it. Why didn't people like it? Because Supervisor liked it. Why did Supervisor like it? Here's another ammo type, and yes, proprietary. There are very few blasters that actually shoot these arrows, this is one of them, and there also came out the Wrath Bolt which used the same arrows, and these are like the most nuggety ammo type and they're not reliable and they're really stupid. The reason these arrows are so stupid is just the way that they are made. They are very thin in the middle and then have a ton of mass up at the front and a little bit of mass at the back and they bend immediately because all the weight's at the front so it's like if it hits something, that weight in the back is still gonna be carrying and it's just gonna push it forward and they bend and it's just like, once they bend, they're bent forever and it's like, you can try and re-straighten them unless it gets so bent that you can't re-straighten it. But like, the, the arrows are goofy and they're very nuggety and they're expensive and you can only order them online. At least they still make them because I'm pretty sure Hasbro knows that if anybody had this blaster, they would need a constant supply of arrows to be able to use them. I have eight and every single one of them are bent. So you are going to get the true experience when I do the firing demo for this one. In all seriousness though, this ammo type isn't the worst ammo type I've seen. It works well enough, and it's very gimmicky, obviously. You're not going to hit someone from 900 feet away with one of these, obviously. And actually, you can't really fault Zombie Strike. In fact, these arrows came out with Rebel Blasters before Zombie Strike actually started using them. I'm pretty sure Hasbro just made the Dreadbolt and the Wrath Bolt to expand the amount of blasters the arrows work with, which I don't blame them for doing. The arrows were very proprietary to very few rebel blasters, and even then, that whole series was kind of proprietary in and of itself. So expanding it to the Zombie Strike series was a pretty good idea, and I think they did a fine job with this one, so let's just start with the actual blaster. Starting with the beginning. So I gotta say, Nerf has really dropped the ball with crossbows pretty much since they started all the way up until the present day, and this is the diamond in the rough. This blaster looks absolutely incredible. I think it looks great from any angle you look at it. From the front, from the bottom, from the side, from the back, from the top. It looks like a crossbow. It feels like a crossbow. It's gigantic. It's huge. It's solid. It's sturdy. It's a really cool design that they didn't do anywhere else. Why didn't they do it anywhere else? I don't understand, because I seriously like the way that they've incorporated all of these sort of zombie strike kind of details. If you know what zombie strike is, I don't need to go over the spiel, but if you don't, it's basically taking a bunch of random tools and, and piece of equipment and making a blaster out of them, like, at the last minute. So they have interesting details, like making a wrench into the priming handle right here and putting wrap around the grip. They've been doing that since the, the start of Zombie Strike, but I like the wrench thing and I like some of these other details that you kind of got to look for. I honestly want to paint this one like I did with the Scravenger because this is a really nice blaster and I feel like a sort of premium color scheme would do it justice. If we go down to the ergonomics, you can see we've got the whole three-in-one package here. That's kind of the thing that I'm going to say in videos now. A main grip, a stock, and a foregrip. The main grip is done very well. It's a little bit too small though. I feel like the main grip could be a bit bigger, but considering the general proportions of this blaster, I think it's fine. The stock, again, a little bit too short, but it doesn't really alter the experience. I mean, it's fine. I could use this as a primary. There's nothing objectively wrong with it. And then there's the foregrip, which is probably the worst part of the ergonomics. It works, but it's just not made very well. It's very cheap, and you can tell because it has a skeletonized design. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it doesn't feel as good as the rest of the blaster, and it wobbles around when you hold it. That is not the actual grip wobbling, that's just the bending of the plastic, as you can see on screen. So they definitely could have done the foregrip better, especially because it's the priming handle, but, eh, well, it's not the end of the world. It still works. So how does this blaster work? Well, first, you prime it by pulling this all the way down. All the way down. And then you put it back up. Then you have to put in the arrow with the, with the back being flat. You just push it in, and you keep pushing until it clicks and the priming indicator turns orange. Then you can fire once, and you have to do that every single time you fire it. It is an ordeal, but it's pretty fun. 
Now there is one scenario where things get a little bit too annoying for my comfort. When the arrow is too bent, it won't go in properly, and sometimes you won't be able to get the priming indicator to turn orange, which is kind of a big deal because the priming indicator is connected to the safety and you can't pull the trigger unless that priming indicator is orange. So, yeah, that's why I say you need a consistent supply of arrows, because once they get bent too much, you're not going to be able to fire them out of the blaster anymore because you won't be able to load them into the blaster anymore. Speed loading this thing is a pain, so I'm going to try and do it on camera to show you how difficult it is. Speed load. Oh, crap. See, this is this is the problem. It won't stay down. Speed load. We got one, I think. There we go. One. I'm genuinely going like as fast as I reasonably can. I need a fifth one. Imagine if you actually had to use this in a zombie apocalypse. You would not survive. So I, I kind of forgot to mention that it comes with a detachable scope. This is the scope. I think it looks good on this blaster, but it looks hilarious if you put it on anything else. Though if you take it off, the blaster looks a little bit more aerodynamic, but I mean, the, what am I kidding? The blaster is ridiculous looking. But uh, yeah, this is not the highest performance caliber sniper rifle blaster in the history of the universe. It is very stupid, it is very silly, it is very gimmicky, and very, very useless in battle. But considering what the blaster is working with, it's not bad. It's done very well, and it's probably done the best that it can be without, like, physically modifying the actual way that it works to shoot a dart or something like that. It's shooting a big nuggety arrow. There's not much that Hasbro can do to make that good, and I feel like this is the best arrow launcher out of all of those, just because it really commits to the role. I mean, look at this thing. It really, really commits more than any other arrow launcher ever has, I think. And I honestly really like this blaster, even though it is genuinely the dumbest thing in my whole collection. It's so fun. It's goofy. It's gimmicky. There's places for blasters like this. I, you cannot get one of these anymore. I have tried. I have looked. I can't link one in the description below. But if you find one of these in the wild and you, ha you have arrows for it and you just want a big goofy crossbow, give it a try. It's fun. So with that said, subscribe, like, comment, I, oh my gosh, I hate my outro, I need to make a new one.